70 years ago, the People's Republic of China was founded, marking the end of over 100 years of invasion and oppression. 70 years on, under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, China is now the world's second largest economy, engaging actively with almost every country on Earth. In this special series, we explore China's development over the seven decades, from political and economic development to diplomatic and military evolution. What are the theories and events that have shaped China's past? What are the trends and challenges that will forge China's future? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn. I've been coming to China for 30 years. I've witnessed astonishing changes. What do China's changes mean for the Chinese people and for the world? Watch our special series on Closer to China, 70 years and counting, China's new era and beyond. About 15 years ago, a senior minister told me that when choosing between economic development and a clean environment, we will always prioritize development. Adding, while we support a clean environment, China has so many people still living in absolute poverty, we cannot forsake them so that urbanites can have fresher air. That prescription may have expired. That way of thinking is history. Since the beginning of reform and opening up in 1978 and the shift to economic development as the overarching priority of the nation, the Chinese government gradually has come to realize the seriousness of ecological degradation and to recognize the importance of ecological conservation. At the 17th CPC National Congress in 2007, the concept of ecological civilization was first proposed. At the 18th CPC National Congress in 2012, the building of ecological civilization was included as a central element of the national five-pronged overall plan. And at the 19th CPC National Congress in 2017, President Xi Jinping stressed the need to speed up reform of the ecological civilization system in order to build a beautiful China. What kind of ecological civilization should China build? What challenges or obstacles lie ahead? Faced with the grim realities of devastating environmental pollution and degraded ecosystems and the practical realities of resource constraints, what real world policies are being enacted? How should President Xi's thought of ecological civilization be understood? We find out to be closer to China. Here, home to the herd, here on the slope, tens of acres of greenwood flourishes, pine, apricot, poplar, sea buckthorn. But 70 years ago, a barren hill of sand was all to be seen. Matoshan is remembered as a mountain with deep valleys and infertile land. The wind here was heavy and sand was everywhere. For villagers, even coming and going was difficult. Simply put, this remote place was not for living. People moved away, Matashan turned empty. Once the land of his birth, now the land is deserted. At this site, Li Yunsheng felt dejected. Lee gave up his once comfortable living environment and good job to devote himself to the cause of ecological development of Matushan. He planted trees year after year, never stopping. Often he'd come to the mountain to care for the trees as if they were his children. <laughs> Two 
啊，温度最低的时候要在三十多度，这个这个树苗在这里呢，成活率很低。所以我在这个地方做树，你们看到那一片片的那个大树啊，那都最少做过六次，才长起了那么多树。做树，每年布栽，每年做树，投入是越来越多。啊，在最困难的时候呢，儿子年树没有学出来。在学校里面吃饭，叫不上伙食饭，吃不上饭，啊，还有的是什么嘞？些朋友不理解，家人也不理解，啊，你放的好大段的钢筋，你不管，你跑在这个山上面吃苦费力又费气，啊，你不是生计了，你疯了，有好多人都是这样说我的。How has he persisted over the years? Li Yunsheng explains with a simple and honest smile. 当时我已经做下去已经有五千多亩树了。如果我当时放弃了，啥也没有了，树也没有了，钱也没有了，啊，就就丢一个人灰溜溜的了。所以我没有办法，只有在这里坚持，一直到坚持到今天。你们看看，这到处都是大松树，啊，满山遍野。啊，我觉得我坚持的值得。啊，我觉得我这的十几年吃苦，啊，我值得。In his mind, the logic is clear. 没有生态的话呢，绝对不可能发展经济。啊，人都不能在这里待了，你还能发展经济吗 ？Ecological protection and development takes a long time, but in the end, nature will reward. 不光是几十年植树造林，这个林木多了，这个树多了，这几年的降雨量就大了，啊，这个这个好像南方的气候了，我说，经常下雨。Matoshan is alive. Hares, pheasants, and foxes run everywhere. On wild grass, under pine trees, herds of cattle roam about. Li Yunsheng took on cattle farming. And under his employment and guidance, some villages living at the foot of the mountain, including cowherds, were gradually lifted out of poverty. Lee's debts, accumulated by planting trees, is now paid off. And though he has money to build a new house, still he lives in a simple flat-type room on top of Matushan. What the girl twice you eat one girl or how you? Just what the part? Rot hard day. Yes. Tree planting is his life passion, his life commitment, his life fortune. Li Yunsheng reflects the qualities of Yoyu people. It is the Yoyu spirit. The forage coverage in Yoyu, like the microcosm of Matoshan, has ridden from 0.3% in 1949 to 55% today. What once was barren land has become an oasis. Credit the leadership of the cadres and the participation of the masses. However, for Yoyu, there is a second problem. Green is the wealth of nature, but where is the wealth of the people? What green development industries does Yoyu have at the moment? How does Yoyu develop its economy through ecology? How to further transform ecological construction into economic development, seeking unification of ecological beauty and people's wealth. Over the past 70 years, we have turned the barren land into an oasis through unrelenting desertification control and tree planting, giving birth to the valuable Yoyu spirit. Based on the sound ecological environment, we have vigorously grown over 26,000 hectares of quality grain crops and 500 hectares of premium Chinese medical crops, transforming pure ecological forests to economic forests. A whole value chain of ecological sheep has been actively promoted with 750,000 sheep raised countywide. Meanwhile, clean energy has been promoted with a total installed capacity exceeding 1.3 million kilowatts. No efforts have been spared to build cultural tourism and sports industries. Next, we will bear firmly in mind General Secretary Xi Jinping's trust to better facilitate the transformation of lush mountains and clear waters into invaluable assets.
so as to share more ecological dividends with the public. Wang Yue is a shepherd, nearly 70 years old. Every morning at 8 o'clock, he drives his sheep to the flat grasslands not far from the pen. In 2012, he leased his own arable land to others. Along with villages in the vicinity, he came to Jiangqian Huling, 30 miles from home. Here in Shanghuling, an ecological livestock farm is his work and livelihood. He knows the habits of the sheep. Over the years, with a call or a whistle, he can lead the flock to where he wants them to go. He knows the various weeds on the pasture and the rules of their growth. He knows where the grass is healthy and where it is sparse. The flock lower their heads and keep on grazing. Wang Yue has his own concerns. The pasture for grazing needs to be replaced time and again, called rotational grazing. In doing so, the grass is re-energized to regrow and the land is less likely to lie waste. For years, Wang Yue's wife has been helping to look after the ewes and lambs, adding forage, changing water, shoveling dung. While working, the couple seems at ease. Despite their age, they rarely show fatigue. At the local canteen, like Wang Yue, the workers here were once looking to make a decent living. Though trees were in abundance, they wouldn't think of starting a lumber business, not wanting to revisit the ecological degradation of the past. But the ecological livestock farm was ecology-friendly, and villages came from afar to settle here. Trees maintain grass, grass feeds sheep, sheep produce value for humans, while humans grow trees and tend grass in return. It's a virtuous circle. Every afternoon at 3 o'clock, Wang Yue takes a whip and drives hundreds of sheep to the south slope, across a trail of wild grass and mountain ridges. He likes to sit on the edge of a grassy mound, watching his flock while puffing his old pipe. It's summer vacation. The third daughter, together with her husband and two kids, came here from Lu Yuang to see Wang Yue. The talk is the good life brought about by ecological improvement in Youyou. Returning to the farm, he counts the numbers on the way. The moment the fence is bolted, a day's work is over. No canteen tonight. Instead, Wang Yue and his wife set up a wooden board on the brick bed and have a meal with their daughter and her family. These watermelons are grown with the help of manure from the factory. Hmm. 
After dinner, a chat with fellow workers is a must before bedtime. The herd, the ecology, their incomes, they talk about everything. In Zhangqian Huling, the ecological livestock farm is the core of the transformation. From sheep herding to sheep breeding, from manure treating to pasture planting, from deep processing of sheep products to continuing the culture of sheep rearing, here natural ecology is preserved and developed and communal wealth is accumulated and shared. Zhang Qian Hu Ling exemplifies green industry in Yu Yu, combining ecological preservation, land appreciation and income growth. A new Yu Yu is emerging. Why is inheriting and carrying forward the yo-yo spirit said to be a significant step in building ecological civilization in China? Personally, I think the yo-yo spirit tells us that the building of both green development and ecological civilizations requires a sound ecological environment. That is to say, building an ecological civilization does not mean inaction facing our current ecological environment. On the contrary, we can make sustained and unremitting efforts and achieve tangible results. This is particularly so in northwestern China. This, I believe, is the greatest inspiration to us from the Yoyu spirit. During the course of its remarkable developmental history, China's domestic policy has transformed from prioritize economic growth to coordinate economic growth with ecological civilization, from pollution first, treatment afterwards, to control and prevent pollution. China has witnessed a profound change of its ecological development model. According to China's national forest inventories, over the course of 70 years, China's forest coverage has soared to about 23% of land mass, nearly three times what it was in 1949, and forest reserves have increased by 8.5 billion cubic meters. China now has the world's largest and fastest growing forest resources, and its ecological environment is improving constantly. The transformation of Youyou County exemplifies China's building of ecological civilization. Saihan Ba Forest Farm in Hebei, Dongjai Gang Mangrove Reserve in Hainan, and the Qinghai Tibet Plateau in West China, and Anji County in Zhejiang. In all these places, green has become the dominant color, reflecting ecological development, just like in Youyou. How should the evolution of China's building of ecological civilization, both in theory and practice, be summarized since the founding of the People's Republic of China and what changes have been made here? The first stage, the establishment of the People's Republic of China until the reform and opening up, a stage that fulfilled Mao Zedong's thought of diligent and thrifty and to build the country through thrift and hard work. The second, the beginning of the reform and opening up from 1977 to 1989, a stage that fulfilled Deng Xiaoping's environmental protection as a basic national policy. The third, from 1989 to 2002, it was a stage that fulfilled Jiang Zemin's strategic thinking of sustainable development. The fourth, a decade from 2002 to 2012, it was a stage that fulfilled Hu Jintao's thinking on building a resource-conserving and environmentally friendly society. The fifth stage began in 2012, and it's called a stage guided by Xi Jinping's thought of ecological civilization. Green is the third of President Xi's five major concepts of development. 
I recall some 20 years ago, a senior minister telling me that while we support environmental protection, we must always prioritize economic development. This way of thinking is no longer true. When did ecological civilization become of highest national policy? Around 2007, our modernization came to a stage that resource-consuming modernization encountered ever-increasing problems that we had to face. It was a change for a certain stage. We had to be aware of the problems brought about by our past modernization model. Second, our understanding of and response to ecological issues shifted as we entered a different stage. We used to see environmental issues as isolated, temporary, or of certain elements, but we gradually came to see it as comprehensive, regional, or even lasting problems. To address such problems, we were no longer constrained by fragmented solutions, but responded with comprehensive measures and even introduced the concept of complete societal transformation. Drawing ecological red lines, implementing environmental protection supervision of central leadership, banning the entry of foreign garbage, the launching of trash sorting regulation in Shanghai. In recent years, China has developed innovative measures for ecological construction. The rise of She Thought provides new guidance for solving China's ecological environment problems in the new era. It also injects fresh energy in advancing the building of ecological civilization. Ecological civilization is a critical part of socialism with Chinese characteristics for the new era. What is the theoretical sources for ecological civilization? In a nutshell, there are three theoretical sources of an ecological civilization. First, it is a Marxist ecology. Marx once said that a harmonious development between man and nature depends on transformed relations between man and man, and man and society. That is to say, having a harmonious development between man and nature depends on our mode of production in life. The second is China's traditional culture, which calls for he he, cooperation and harmony between man and nature, and see them as a harmonious whole. Thus, an ecological ethic of indefinite responsibilities was born, unlike the Western definite contracted responsibility ethics. For instance, indefinite responsibility means that I shoulder indefinite responsibility for my ancestors, like the grandfather of my grandfather. I also shoulder indefinite responsibility for my offspring, like the grandson of my grandson. Third, the Western concept of sustainable development. In the 1960s and 1970s, Marx's prediction unfortunately came true. A century after Marx, the traditional industrial development model brought about a series of environmental disasters. As a result, some visionaries of the West started to reflect on the traditional way of production and life. After repeated reflections, struggles, and decades of hard work, in 2000, the UN identified the concept of sustainable development and listed 17 goals covering population, resources, and the environment, among others. Xi Jinping's thought on ecological civilization is an important part of Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. For example, uh, green is the third of the five major development concepts uh, that has been propounded for the uh, economy. So how would you characterize uh, Xi Jinping's thought on ecological civilization? Um, in particular, how does it deal with the natural tension between economic development and environmental protection? Xi Jinping's thought of ecological civilization reflects the essence of socialism. One critical feature is fairness and justice. For people who get rich first at the cost of the majority's ecological environment, regions get rich first at the cost of other regions' environment, and a generation gets rich at the cost of later generations' ecological environment. It is environmental unfairness, which also equates to social unfairness. What is the ecological civilization for? To coordinate the overall environmental benefits of different regions, groups, and generations.
which are the fundamental requirements of socialism. She's thought of ecological civilization also demonstrates people orientation, or our fundamental purpose of serving the people. The environmental issues in essence are major issues involving people's well-being. So people have the right to know, participate in, and supervise environmental issues. The building of an ecological civilization encourages all people to actively participate in environmental protection. This grand vision of a community of, uh, of shared future of all nations, uh, at the same time the importance of ecological civilization can China facilitate the think the ecological civilization thinking that it does domestically with the vision with the international vision that has been proposed President Xi proposed a crucial concept man and nature form a community of life in rural civilization people work for survival a community of life in industrial civilization, wealth was sought after, a community of profits. The life community of man and nature proposed by President Xi marks an era of the community of ecological civilization. In this era, people are interrelated, as we all have a stake in each other. We are to jointly bear the irreversible environmental crisis that knows no borders in an integral ecological system. Against such a context, a community of ecological civilization calls for the building of a community with a shared future for mankind to jointly address the environmental issues confronting us. An ecological civilization could serve as a platform to illustrate the community of a shared future for mankind. Some Westerners neither believe in the building of the community with a shared future for mankind nor the Belt and Road Initiative as they witnessed their rise through conquest, wars, colonization, plunder and shifts in ecological costs. It is hard for them to believe that China, with such a big economy and a fast growth rate, can be strong and not seek hegemony. It is because they don't understand Chinese civilization and never read Chinese history. China has never engaged in imperialism or colonialism. I think ecological civilization would be a good entry point to explain the community with a shared future for mankind. With ecological civilization as the entry point, we can explain the relation between a community of a shared future for mankind and Chinese civilization, and further explain the cultural and historical genes, green, peace, open, inclusive, and sustainable, that are embedded in the community. That is why China could offer its experience to global environment governance and sustainable development. China has been talking about reducing pollution for a long time. This time seems different. Ecological civilization entered the pantheon of highest national priorities when President Xi Jinping included green as the third of his five development concepts. Since the 18th CPC National Congress in 2012, China has formulated more than 40 plans for the building of ecological civilization, stressing accountability for ecological environmental damage and environmental protection supervision of central leadership. For example, policies enacted include banning foreign garbage sent to China, strict trash sorting regulations, and compensation for ecological protection. China has promoted green development of air, water, and soil, and established the Belt and Road Green Development International Alliance. On the whole, the quality of China's ecological environment has continued to improve, but there are interest groups, such as certain industries, that seek to retard, if not block, anti-pollution measures. That's why achievements so far have been unstable. Best is to recapture how traditional Chinese culture venerates the environment. Today, what works is a play between theory and practice. Theory is Xi Jinping's thought on ecological civilization. Practice, for example, is the spirit of Youyou County's green development. President Xi's vision of ecological civilization is for building a beautiful China. It sets an example for a community of shared future for humankind. In our next episode on New China's 70th anniversary, we explore China's foreign diplomacy to be closer to China.